pledge of allegiance. Order. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Hello, selectmen. So have a chance to look at the minutes. I did. I did. And is everybody happy? Yes, I guess I might not have felt the need So, I guess I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Does somebody want a second? I'll okay. set up it. Okay. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Okay. Hey, Tom, you might want to listen to this. Eden Mountain House Disturbance, you're up next. Um, we spoke with somebody from the state yesterday, the state DOT, a um, fellow named Jim McMahon. He's very aware of what's going on up there, all right? And um, he has given the Eagle Mountain House a deadline of the middle of October to get everything buttoned up the way they want to see it done, okay? Based on what Burr Phillips, our engineer, has recommended. He feels that at the moment, it's a little more stable than it was. Uh, they're trying to minimize the erosion. Um, and there may be a catch basin at some point to funnel some of this extra water that comes through, okay? Um, He's had a state crew up there a couple of times, as you know, or maybe you've seen them. And he went up there himself to see what was going on. And he basically said that, look, they're going to get this thing done. We're going to get it done. We're going to make sure. We're going to give them a deadline, which he did. And everybody knows that now. Um, and they realize that it's the contractor's responsibility. But we haven't dropped the ball on this thing. It's about getting people and machinery on the ground to do these things. And we've had a couple of events, rain events, as you know, that are kind of extraordinary, although some are saying that maybe they're not so extraordinary anymore. This may be the new norm, you know, but that's that, neither here nor there. So that's the update for this. They've got until October 15th to get this thing done. And so that you won't have the problems that you're having now. Whether or not I have the input on it, I don't know. But at least to 
to be able to understand what their proposed solution is. Um, and you know, just for the record, you know, there, there's been, you know, this isn't, you know, this is obviously an ongoing, and you know, I've had discussions with people around the house, and there's things that they said they were going to do, and they just haven't done mm -hmm. any of them. And, you know, it's been coming up on a year now, so you can hopefully understand and appreciate my frustration. Yep. Uh, and I just want to, to see this get resolved. Tim, question, which property is yours? So we're six Riverview, so okay. we have maybe 200 feet of frontage on Carter Notch. So there's two, there's two culverts that drain from their property. Yeah. There's a lot of 30 inch, I believe, culvert, and then there's the smaller 12 inch. Gotcha. Um, so, you know, there's been sediment coming from, from both, both sources, setting up the different areas of my property. Okay. And then my other thought is, in order to make sure that everyone has the same story and the same updates, is it worth it to keep one point of contact so, Tim, you're not dealing with the Eagle Mountain House because they should be dealing with Burr and this DOT and us maybe so i'm wondering if it's worth it for tim you to be updated by one person from the town whoever that be whether it be you or right. her well I, I, just well, to right. get the updates. well yeah no that makes perfect sense to me and having just <clears throat> come back on the board in april trying to get up to speed with this issue yeah. mm -hmm. uh, my, my questions about what we're uh, talking about right now what's been shared here with Tim is is there going to be a written plan and is it going to be acknowledged by the Eagle Mountain House mm -hmm. with a signature or some form of acknowledgement and are there consequences uh, for what will happen if, if the plan isn't completed to birth satisfaction right we're hoping they do that the right way now. Burr's got a plan out there, Kevin. The, I suppose he's working, I suppose he's AGB. It, yeah, and they're yeah. working yeah. to get this thing resolved. Now everybody knows what the end date is here, as best we can. So yeah. okay. we have to, I'll, you know, we'll be, I'll be the point person in or Kevin, you know, to, to try to make sure that um, you understand, Mr. Yes. Nickel, Tim, you know, um, mm -hmm. What's going on? We'll keep you abreast as best we can. Um, October's coming in pretty quick, so I just can't stress enough how important I think it is that there's actually a plan that's observable and measurable, and that is acknowledged by all parties, and that have that has consequences, you know, spelled out. That's I think an important. That's all. I think. You know, those are all important elements to right. having a plan that is actually going to be successfully completed. Right. Well, with them getting the letter, I agree with you, you know, um, in knowing what, what they're up against, that if they don't do it, I would have to assume that the, the state is going to start levying fines. They're going to start, they're going, they're going to come down. Right now, they're trying to, everybody's trying to work with them. And again, as I said, these extraordinary rain situations that we had and all that. So. What Bob said is, is a good idea. Um, we should, we'll be in contact with Burr and making sure that we do have something that you can see. Because this is something you want to see. Are you an engineer, uh, Tim? Or do you have a sense of? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm a silver. All right, well, that, well, that, that helps. <laughs> you looking for a job? No, <laughs> I mean, I think Kevin is probably going to know yeah. what's going on most of the time. Right. And Kevin is really our building inspector. <laughs> is really the guy that goes up there and has dealt with it and has seen it and taken pictures and all this other stuff. So, What's your understanding, Kevin, about what would happen if there was a plan to mitigate this issue that was not fully implemented and in place in October? I mean, what would be consequences as a result of that? Well, I mean, the town has a capacity to permit the RSA to find them daily. I know that, mm -hmm. but I mean, Put it this way: the left side, the left side of that driveway is pretty simple. I mean, if they clear out the dirt piles and seed the whole thing, and um, 
that pretty much takes care of it. It's the right side of the driveway, all the way from out back with the water running down and just follows the driveway all the way up to the road. That's the real problem. That's where it's going to take some engineering or regrading and probably paving a portion of that at the very bottom to get the water to go left and right actually into the, yeah. the culverts. Um, right. and, and I think one of the issues, and I think I've talked to Burr about this too, is the um, in our town, the, um, the erosion or site disturbance are guidelines and they should be, they should be an ordinance. Mm -hmm. The planning board should address it and, and write up a, a uh, so it's in the ordinance. So when, before this job even started, they actually wrote a plan that was approved before they even started construction and, and that was not done. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. That makes sense. Okay. Thank you. So I think as far as like a point of contact, it looks like there are at least seven parties involved here with Kevin Bennett, our building inspector, Burr Phillips, the civil engineer, HEB, the engineer for the Eagle Mountain House, the Eagle Mountain House management, Tim, property owner, and DOT and board of selectmen. So I think it would be wise for Tim for you to keep in touch with either the board of selectmen or Kevin Bennett directly for updates, yeah. thoughts. Yeah, I think that's do you have Tim's contact information? Yeah. I do. Okay. Yeah. Does that sound logical, Tim? And that way we've got one answer going to you and, um, you know, we'll keep you updated on progress yeah. as we hear it through Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds great. And uh, just a, a, a note, since you listed off all of the affected parties, that um, part of the issue now is because that culvert is, that North culvert is plugged, there's more runoff going on to um, the common road. Um, or erode, and now that's eroding out as well. So that could become an association issue. Well, sorry for all of that. What's happened there? But um, I feel like we're, we're on the right track here to get this remedy done. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hopeful. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all. I do appreciate the um, the interest and the. Um, you know, working together to get this result up. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tim. Okay. All right. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for joining. All right. Okay. Yep. Have a good night, all. You Thanks. too. All right. Um, so we're going to appoint fire warrant. I'm going to end the Zoom meeting just so we Sorry. I'm going to end the Zoom meeting because okay. no one else is on there. Okay. Okay. Yes. So Kenny Crowther, our longtime fire warden, just before I had a chance to ask him for a fire department, I burned it. There's a reason. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Kenny. I'm not sure how many years, but I, probably a lot. 20, 20. Anybody have any idea how many years Kenny's been the fire warden? I mean, it's a long time. He, he was he setting so his deputy fire warden when he was 19. Oh, right. geez. So started at 19 years old. I don't know how old he is, but. Well, he's only 30 years old. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Kenny. Appreciate everything you've done for us. And now the new fellow who wants to come in is not a new fellow at all. His name is Jay Henry. And he would like to take over the position. And I think he's certainly qualified well, fine, yeah. to do that, right? <laughs> so um, does anybody want to make a motion here to um, assign him that town warden, fire warden? Position. I'll make a motion to uh, sign Jay Henry as the new fire warden. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Was it Gordon? Okay. Yeah. That, yeah, that's right. Succession. Okay. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. All right. Um, there's no signature here. No, no signatures required on this one. There will Pardon. be. We just need the um, application filled out. Okay. All right. So we got that. that okay. Um, also, this is just sort of the Thompson House Eatery. Um, they have a yearly annual farm dinner, and some of that is the outside. The area will be fenced off and roped, and guests during the event. All, all of the stuff that we re require, they do this year in and year out. Um, so are there any questions about this? Oh, no. Uh, the date of it is uh, August 13, 2023. It will be held then. I guess I did have one question. Is there a town? 
Yeah. They send it through the back. It's a farm dinner yeah. that they do in open air. And it's not uh, This is a alcohol license uh, request, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to make mm -hmm. a motion to approve liquor okay. to be okay. Gotcha. Do you want me to make that motion? Please do. I will make a motion to allow <laughs> them to you serve liquor out. outside, <laughs> outside in the back in their for their farm dinner. I'll second that. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Sorry. Yeah. No, this is good. Sorry. Interrupting. <laughs> There we go. All right. Um, here we go. Hazardous waste collection. Maybe I remember the first one. Wow. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess you know this is something we do. We've been doing for years and years and years. On Saturday, September twenty third, which happens to be my birthday, everybody can bring all their Conway household hazardous waste <laughs> to Conway. <laughs> what a great day to do that. Um, and do we need to, do, if the five gallon limit per household, please know. We're going to be posting that. That it'll all be posted. Yeah. So um, I think we, we want to do this again, right? Yeah. We've been doing it forever. I think it's a good thing. I'm not sure how much participation we have. Does anybody have any idea? We, ever got we, any get, um, we get a count each year, which later on will um, budget for next year for um, contribution. But usually, I don't know. Um, I don't know what the, I know what the dollar amounts are. I don't know what that equals per person. Right. But limit. I think it, we get people. Yeah. You said limit five gallons per household. Yeah. On the 23rd of September. So, um, can I make a motion on this? No, no. It's all set. This is it. Okay. Good. Pending fire state updates, facilities committee was. Um, on, on the fire station, just a quick update. Okay. Um, I know the planning board is working on the capital improvement plan, and they had some comments that I read in the minutes that they weren't aware that we had talked about the location okay. being over on the tennis courts, and they wanted to, they felt it would be prudent for the taxpayers and others to know that what research we had done on other alternate locations and one of the locations they had suggested was um, Mr. Mallet's property that is the un, um, untouched area between their parking lot and the transfer station driveway and um, I don't think the planning board knows that Jay did look at that property as far as access and proximity on Route 16 and access to the curve would be a little tough really tough actually to have fire equipment and, and personnel out there out near the curve so that was not considered as a viable option um, that also um, brought up some comments that were made about um, jay driving the project and i think it's really valid points that jay isn't driving this project he's presenting a lot of things but as we talked about in the last meeting i think it's really important for someone that is not the fire chief to step forward and be the representative to present to the Board of Selectmen. So I think being on the committee and you being a liaison, we should make sure that go moving forward that it really is clear that this isn't a Jay's fire station, Jay's wish list kind of thing. And I don't think it is. I think he's been really fair about presenting what he thinks is what the town needs, not what he needs. So um, I just wanted to, I really want to put that on record, first of all, and also just suggest that we, um, make sure that they're presenting it objectively okay. and with, with thought and also presenting the same information to the planning board so we're not duplicating efforts or right. whatever. <clears throat> um, the other thing is I read somewhere in another town that they were doing a public hearing but they referred to it as a public engagement opportunity and I wrote that down because I thought that was really, really good because public hearing sounds like we're gonna tell people what they need to hear and I don't know, I don't get a positive vibe from that. So I think we should use this tagline, public engagement opportunity. When we do budget hearings, when we do the fire station hearings, it's time for the public to engage in, um, in, in their opportunity to engage in input on, our, on decisions that affect them. We may have to call it a public hearing for purposes of um, legality, but I think we should try to use this to bring people in. I think it's easy Maybe enough it's to semantics, but. still treat it 
like a public hearing, Agreed. but call it a public engagement opportunity. I think yeah. that's, that makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. And just, you know, as far as updates that I have, as I meet with <coughs> Kevin, I meet with Jay between yeah. meetings as a rule because I'm a liaison for both. Right. Um, <coughs> when Jay and I connected, he told me about <coughs> the idea of possibly using that Ta that property, that town property over there, and there's quite a bit of it that is wetlands. Mm -hmm. And over there, where? where, where by the transfer station. We don't mm -hmm. really, we don't call it. Actually, we don't, we don't even own, we don't even this own is, much there. Yeah. Yeah. This, is, this is what we own, okay? Mm -hmm. This is the driveway into the transfer station. So this would be the shared opening. And this would be where, it, and this is Jay's to scale position of where the fire station would be. And again, you've got your wetlands boundary somewhere between that line and the inside line is where you're going to be able to find your wetlands that you can't touch. Mm -hmm. So, and we all know what this can look like mm -hmm. um, 10 minutes before the dump or transfer station opens and all that. And so he looked at it and he also figures there will be lots of excavation to make that site happen. Mm -hmm. And he is not, and, and I like the fact that he was open about it when it came right. up. He said, well, let's go take a look. And here's what he came back with. So and I can have Julie make copies of this for, for I'm, I'm good, both of you. But I think also considering the property that Mr. Mallet owns and whether or not that would be a potential buy and that and is a wetlands area as well and that would be the cost of property if Mr. Mallet would even consider it. And again, I haven't even brought this like that to Mr. Mallet or anything like that, but just considering right. other areas, I don't yeah. think that's a buildable area without a lot of money for excavation. Right. Yeah, I don't know if we want to look around at opportunities to acquire land that we don't own for right. this, whether it's with Mr. Mallet or somebody yeah. else. I mean, we can certainly do things like that, but um, at any rate, that's pretty much the only other town property that he was aware of that could even be considered, and, and it's, a, it's a tight spot. But yeah. we also talked about how this is going to look <coughs> um, to market this or to to get the word out, increase awareness of needs and everything else, and is should it happen at um, the Betty Whitney Center? Should it happen here at the town office? Should it happen at the fire station? You know, if people really want to see what we're proposing to replace. Maybe that's the best spot. In my mind, it wasn't so much the location, but the information that we were going to share. I think there's a piece that will represent the, the history of the building and looking at what happened in 47, 81, 04, uh, you know, build outs out back, all of that. That can, doesn't take a lot of time to do that. But, um, and then, you know, taking a look at what exists now and talking about renovation numbers that we have, talking about build numbers, talking about whether it's rebuilding on that side or relocating to another to to the other side there. Mm -hmm. And just putting together a package that really wouldn't need to take a long time to present. Right. But if we've got something and you know I, I live in a PowerPoint world, so I'm thinking about mm -hmm. a nice PowerPoint presentation which helps with continuity because whether I go over and talk to the planning board or the library trustees or a, you know, a group of businesses or the school board or whoever, they are basically see, you know, seeing the same presentation. Yeah, continuity and consistency. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and so we, we, we talked about that. And so for the public engagement opportunities that we're looking at could essentially be a road show. Mm -hmm. And so there's work to do, as you both know. We have numbers on a lot of things. 
what I was just talking about with Julie earlier was some of these grant opportunities we've heard. Is there anything there? And how about the loan opportunity? I think that's an area where there's where the most work is yet to be done to determine how this is going to be uh, financed. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I think we're a long way away from being there. You know, there are some answers to big questions that once we get those are going to help us understand that um, so, but at, at any rate that's kind of recapping my liaison conversation with Jay that I've had between meetings of, about the fire station well, so, so it's safe to say though that everything is on the table as far as options not only um, a new fire station but a Building, oh, refurbishing this absolutely. all on the table. Well, and I think just, just so people understand so that. So my my feeling, and, and again, we, when we're putting together a presentation, it's going to be equal input, no matter who is actually clicking the slides through. But I think that it's important <coughs> to have uh, slides that show the renovation. What specifically is the renovation going <coughs> to? Going to yep. entail yep. how much is it going to cost? Mm -hmm. How many square feet is the new building? Mm -hmm. How much is it going to cost? So mm -hmm. that owners, or so that homeowners and property owners in town can make a an informed decision. Right. That's the whole purpose for That's providing it. information. Am I? Yep. So yeah. you're right on. Sorry, on. Okay. Yeah. And, and I think whatever we do. You know, as far as a presentation that we can share with people in town is something that uh, is going to be important that we all sign off on, no matter how yeah. we feel. If, we, if we're leaning one way or another right now, that, that's secondary. Uh, we, I want it to be something that's objective and, and, um, and, and vetted through us. Right. Well, there's no guarantee that the vote in the end will be unanimous. I mean, it's still, something could happen. It could be a two to one. It could you be know, a one to two. two. It could be zero to three. You know, so there's a number of things that happen. But all options, as I say, are on the table. Right? Okay. I think right. we're, we're in a pretty good place. We do have some sense of some cost through the municipal bond. We haven't looked at it, but I mean, as far as a 20 year mm -hmm. run, what it would be to hit on the, uh, the, uh, the uh, tax rate each year for mm -hmm. business owners and homeowners, probably. You know, but, yeah. So, but, I, but, but that's very. It's not. Nothing's been done with that. It's just one part of it. We don't have any of the loan numbers or anything else. I would like to to see, and I'm looking at you, Julie. Is like, what exactly is this loan opportunity, and what would the difference be to finance some of it through that low cost loan that Emily was referring? Yeah, to? I think that's in Emily's. Um, her between her and Peter, I think they're. Okay. Kind of taking I that can on. reach out to her on that and find some more details. You could? That. So, okay, yeah. great. Yeah. yeah, because I think it's it's time to really get more concrete yeah. as far as all of those funding options are, that are out there. I'll work on that side of it. Thank you. I think yeah, that's that everything. That was good that, that's, that's everything <laughs> Thank I you. had. All right. <laughs> I intend to make sure that uh, regardless of whether Jay's here, at every meeting right. that we're speaking between meetings and I can come in here and give a reasonably half intelligent update of, of where things are. Excellent. Good. All right. Next item, short term rentals. We have a couple of to approve. We want to approve uh, Linda and John Little, two stem turn hill road. So facilities uh, committee? I'm sorry. Was there no, there's nothing. There? Okay, good. Okay. Thank you. Oh, sorry. That's what Julia's week's copies for us. Thank you. Let's just keep an eye on me. Yep. Linda <laughs> Sean Little, 2 Stem Turn Hill Road. One bedroom tax card, approved building uh, permit barn. One bedroom septic for barn only. Advertising one bedroom, four beds. They need to put maximum sleeps four on the ad. Owner occupied, so they will not be limited to 30 rentals per year. Okay to approve based on updating the ad. So we're going to take one at a time to make a motion to approve yeah, that. Yeah. All right. So I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the John and Little, uh, John and Linda Little, um, STR. I will uh, second that. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> then we have um, Brendan and Shelly Malloy on 31 Bird Road. Where is Bird Road? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, She's yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's why I don't know where it is. I don't want that <laughs> one too much. Like a three-bedroom tax card, three-bedroom septic, three-bedroom building permit. Advertisement says three bedrooms, but it is showing four or five bedrooms, sleeps eight. They have updated the advertisement to reflect three bedrooms, another one okay to approve. I will make a motion to approve the Malloys at 31 Heard Road for a short term rental. I'll second that. Be second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. In one, one last one here, Alec and Melissa Glorio on 146 Tin Mine Road. Um, a six bedroom tax card, but only three bedroom septic on file. Will be limited to 30 rentals per year. Um, their, their advertisement not submitted and they're not approved. They need to provide that to approve. Okay, so they are at this point. We would be limiting them to 30 rentals per year, but more work needs to be done on that, Julie. Yes, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So we, we can't we can't accept Correct. just yet. Right. Somebody want to make a motion on this one? Not accept. Well, I'll yeah. make a motion on the table. It to yeah. Next meeting. Okay. Is that we'll second that. Yeah. Yeah. If we get what we need between now and then. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Very very good. That's, um. Second. I second. Okay. Sorry. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Sorry. Okay. Um, building and driveway permits. Um, <coughs> I don't approve the building. They're all any. You see any of Kevin? No. Carl's Fitters Ring. Or Quadros replace the roof. Generate. That's all set. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. And I was just asking Julie about something in terms of the upcoming meetings and public comment. I just wanted to, should public comment be made before we say the upcoming meetings or it doesn't really matter? I kind of like that too because we sort of close out with the date of the next meetings and then adjourn. Yeah. So it makes sense to me. So I should ask them for the public comment now, right? Is that what we say? Makes sense to me. And there's no public here to make any public comments. We're making it easier on the internet. Sorry. Okay. Um, but that's not apathy. Okay, and now, um, now that I get to the upcoming meetings, uh, Tuesday, August 8th at 3.30, and Tuesday, August 22nd at 3.30. Right here. Perfect. Right Right. Okay. Right. 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 Right.